Hello friends, this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network every Thursday afternoon, 1 to 1.30 p.m. I'm your host, Danilo Cuellar, and today we will be discussing how childhood spanking and corporal punishment propagates statist violence. This is an elaboration of a blog post I did uh, entitled Childhood Spanking and Corporal Punishment. For one to be so opposed to state violence on the one hand, whilst practicing childhood assault, a.k.a. spanking, on the other, is profoundly hypocritical to say the least. Violence is violence, whether it is inflicted on fully developed adults in their right minds or immaturely developed children with no cap capability for self-defense. There is nothing noble or honorable about saying, quote, my child is well behaved because he or she listens to every word I say, end quote. All this indicates is the ability of the parent to strike fear and intimidation into the pure heart of an unbiased human being who seeks only to learn about the world. Is the proper treatment of such a curious nature to inflict pain and punishment in response to actions we deem to be, quote, errors from the vantage, artificial vantage point of cultural propriety? If such barbaric treatment of children actually produced positive results, we should logically expect its use to decrease as successive generations produce more docile children, leading to docile adults. However, this is not the case. When parents engage in corporal punishment, it is usually done in the midst of uncontrollable fury and ferocious anger. Is this the proper atmosphere to teach one's child about morality? If such savagery did amount to anything other than the repression of emotions and the formation of insidious grudges, then we should necessarily be living in a genuine utopia free of crime and mental illness. If we would like to see a more peaceful world, we must first start by treating with kindness and respect those in our society that will bring about this fresh future, the children. Only when their needs, desires, and curiosities are given the proper deference we would associate with a wise elder, will we begin to approach a truly peaceful and voluntary society. Sure, there will always be violence in a peaceful society, as sure as there will always be death in amongst a vibrant rainforest. The key is not to feed the violent seed within each child. And I end with a quote from... Peter Gray, Ph.D. We expect kids to sit for hours and do what they are told. And if they can't do it, nobody kindly says, I see you're restless, get up and play. Instead, they say, you better go get tested for ADHD so we can put you on drugs. End quote. So, childhood spanking... <clears throat> This is a curious practice that uh, a, lot of, a lot of people that I, uh, I talk to engage in. And I like to ask people, what's the reason that you spank, right? Um, is it because your parents told you? Is it because you were spanked? Is it because you know, society dictated this is the proper way to raise one's children? Um, now, first of all, if we are all doing things because society dictates them to be proper and correct uh, without actually questioning the motives or the, um, the reasons behind such actions, um, that would be a supreme tragedy. <laughs> Since that would mean that we would all be, be uh, existing without you know, intellectual thought and uh, deductive reasoning, right? This is very sad existence, okay? We must always question those things that have been passed down to us because if they were truly, if they truly contained um, value, then there would be, you know, there would be all the reason in the world to continue doing them, okay? But if we're just doing it because we were told to do it, 
well, then uh, <laughs> we might as well be back in our government indoctrination camps, public schools, uh, just doing things and memorizing things and regurgitating them because we were told to. Okay, never mind understanding and reasoning it out or uh, critically analyzing anything. Okay, <laughs> so a lot of people do spanking because it's considered tradition. That's what you do. Spare the rod, spoil the child, right? Um, and and this is just very sad. You know, there there exists this very special relationship between uh, a parent and their child that is that is not present basically anywhere else. Okay, okay. It's like it's like if you assault your peer, that's what it's called. It's called assault, right? <clears throat> or um, yeah, basically assault. If you if you do that to uh, to your spouse, if a man does it to his wife, of course it's looked horribly down in in society. Um, but equally so, it should be if a woman does it to his to her husband, right? Equally so, um, that is called domestic abuse, right, between spouses. Uh, however, if it's done from parent to child, it's called discipline. It's called a different word, all right? It's a, it's a euphemism. And we should, the beginning of wisdom is calling things by their proper names, okay? And when you assault somebody, you know, when you strike someone with the obvious intent of either correcting behavior or just inflicting pain or wanting them to uh, be fearful of you or intimidated of you, regardless, regardless of the motive, Assault is assault, okay? And it's very sad because children are, out of all of those situations, children are the most defenseless, the weakest, the smallest, all right? Yet they receive the least amount of compassion, all right? And this is very sad because children were not... They didn't choose their parents. They didn't choose to be born in a particular family. All right. It's an accident of birth. Right. So it's completely ridiculous to regard their relationship with their parent in any other way that's, you know, that, that, that would be voluntary, such as between employer and employee, right, or between friends, right. Those are all voluntary relationships and they can be ended um, anytime one party is feeling abused or neglected. Uh, so this, this special unique relationship is completely, it's completely unique, right? The, it, it doesn't exist anywhere else. You know, a child does not choose their parents, okay? So therefore, we should strive to act in such a way that our children would be proud to say that they were our parents, okay? And when they grow up, you know, when they, when they become sh as strong and as physically mature as us, I wonder, how would our children look at us? Would you, you know, I, I, the way I, I raise my children, I have a, a four-year-old and a two-year-old, and I constantly think, um, the way that I'm raising my child, would I be proud of that? And how would my child view me when they get older? Would they view me with disdain, with scorn? Or would they, would they speak of my, uh, my method of child raising, child rearing as uh, commendable? Okay? And, I, and so I, I constantly think about that. It, it guides my actions. And, um, and more and more, I'm, I'm starting to believe that um, the abusive relationship between a parent that strikes and assaults their children and, and, the, uh, and, the, and the abused child is very much setting the groundwork, the foundation for um, public school, which, you know, for, <laughs> which is in many ways resembles prison in many, many ways, right? Public school, like, uh, you know, so many ways, like, you know, a bell signals, you know, Changes, you know, change from one scene, scenery to another. Um, <clears throat> you know, you have to recognize authority. Authority always uh, answers all questions for you. There's no encouragement of uh, resolving disputes amongst peers. Um, 
you know, there's, there's this clock watching mentality of waiting to be free. There's a, there's a, a special time where each, where, where, where both, uh, both groups of people get, um, get, uh, you know, lunchtime or freedom. <laughs> so it's very much, uh, <clears throat> considered, um, you know, very similar to prison. And so the, the relationship of, uh, teacher to student is very similar to the relationship of, uh, the, um, the parent who commits assault or spanking, uh, on their child and the fear and intimidation that results from it. So it basically is setting the groundwork for a statist mentality, for a mentality that is proud to be a serf or a slave under the patriarchal institution known as government, okay, the myth in authority. So it basically establishes the groundwork, the framework that says uh, your desires, your curiosities, your needs are not important. They're not first and foremost, okay? First and foremost is what authority dictates is good and true. All right? So forget about individu individuality. Uh, forget about what you think, right? It's what authority thinks. It's what authority believes you should be learning at this point in time. That's, that's basically all it comes down to. Um, so, so, so it's very sad that, uh, that, that some parents engage in this practice because, you know, I, I, I see it so often and, um, and, it, and it's almost like if, if this really did some good, would we not necessarily see a decrease in successive generations, right? If it was so effective at producing um, model human beings, <laughs> why, are, why do kids, why, why, why do parents still need to resort to, uh, to spanking? It's just, to me, it, it, it doesn't make sense. It's like, it's like you know, you're trying to, you're trying to breed uh, or you're trying to uh, encourage the development of, uh, you know, I guess they, they think that's going to be make, make a peaceful human being, but um, you're using violence, a violent mindset in order to, um, in order to bring about a peaceful human being, which is uh, entirely illogical, nonsensical. Um, <clears throat> you know, George Carlin put it perfectly when he said, uh, you know, fighting for peace is like screw, screwing for virginity, right? It's a similar concept. Um, an eye for an eye leaves everyone blind, right? So, initiated force and violence does not produce peaceful results, ever, ever, okay? You know, it's like a drone strike in, uh, in Yemen or Pakistan or Somalia does not eliminate enemies, okay? It creates new ones, <laughs> many more in succession. Uh, it's called blowback, right? In uh, in in in, uh, in military terms, that's called blowback, right? When you um, you destroy the country's infrastructure, you create violence and havoc, and wreak, wreak violence and havoc, um, and you're naturally going to have resentful people growing up in that uh, devastated environment who are going to surprise hate the U.S. Right? <laughs> it makes complete makes makes complete sense. So in all situations in life. Violence, initiated violence, does not solve situations. It does not resolve disputes, okay? It's not diplomatic, it's not diplomacy, <laughs> you know? It has nothing to do with reason or logic, okay? And it's just brute force, which is incidentally what um, statism and government is all about, right? It's an institutionalized form of violence, initiated violence, okay? Now, we must make the distinction between um, initiated force or, uh, yeah, initiated force and defensive force, right? Because according to um, libertarian principles and voluntarism principles, um, you have what's known as the non aggression principle. <clears throat> the non aggression principle basically states that um, defensive force is. Not only is is um, is allowed, but is entirely necessary for the maintenance and uh, sustainability of a peaceful society. Right? Um, if you were to have a society based on 100% pacifists <clears throat> who don't, you know, who don't fight back against aggressors when they when they're being attacked, then um, 
then you will always it's just it's impossible to to sustain such a society in uh you know when say they're constantly being attacked by an outside force right so so there has to be um you know people have to be able to defend themselves this is just you know in nature right you know self-preservation right animals defend themselves they want to stay alive right the gazelle runs away from the lion he wants to stay alive right he doesn't just sit sit in the field and wait for the lion right there's always the um <clears throat> there's always the run the chase right so so there's always the aspect of self-preservation all right and this is this is the use of defensive force also in uh Various animals, they use venom, they use, uh, they have, that's the reason they have claws and various things like that, self-defense, right? <clears throat> so, um, defensive force is entirely admissible and um, necessary. However, initiated force, <clears throat> which is purely what government is, initiated force, right? Taxation is initiated theft, right? Um, uh, you know, indefinite detentions and initiated kidnapping. So it's all about initiated force. There's nothing, uh, <laughs> nothing graceful, nothing reasonable, nothing logical about the uh, the institution of government. It's not a suggestion, right? It's not a um, <clears throat> it's not a uh, <laughs> a recommendation. You know, their their laws their laws are not suggestions, right? They they don't ask you to obey the law. They tell you, right? The law is a command, a threat, backed by a gun. Right. So so this is this is how government is just basically the monopoly on violence. Right. The initiation of force. So. So in this sense, it, it's entirely necessary for defensive force to be used. OK. And in the from the perspective of, of spanking, kids obviously are not in a place to defend themselves. Right. They are emotionally mature immature they're physically immature their um their bodies are not even fully developed yet their brains are not even fully developed yet so they are massively dependent on parents for their development for all of these systems you know their mental development their intellectual their physical development and so not only do they not have the means to defend themselves against assault but their development would be severely um, deformed as a result of all of this, um, all this violence and all of this abuse. <clears throat> you know, mammals. You know, most um, mammals. This is how. This is how it's, it, it. You know, when when a mother has a child, she uh, she has to care for the child for a long time. You know, and that you have to. You know, we have to teach our children. Um, skills and ways of living in society and uh, and so that's that's basically how we should be as parents we should be guides okay we should we should not be masters we should not be authority figures we should be guides or advisors <clears throat> right so if your child wants to wants to know something right um, they'll ask you okay um, there's no need to impose your will on your child. There's no, absolutely no need. Children have inborn natural curiosity for learning about the world. This is, this is the first education. This is the most important education, right? Because when you learn something because you're interested in learning it, <clears throat> it's much more likely that that information will be imprinted deeply, right? The, the stuff that you learn... When you're when you're sincerely passionate about learning it, that's what you're going to remember. Not all the trivial, insignificant minutia that we were all force-fed in our government indoctrination camps um, and told that is necessary to learn for the test or for the regents or for the final. <laughs> all right. There's only information that's important to learn that's useful and valuable for life or there's information that's completely useless and irrelevant all right and uh and i'm sorry to say but but government schools do not teach us to be um critically thinking creative um ingenious people at all <laughs> whatsoever <clears throat> so so this is in my opinion this is what parents should be this is what i strive to be is 
a model. You know, we teach by example, right? Kids are a sponge for, for anything, for knowledge, but, but they're a sponge for your actions and your words, right? So actually even more than words, yeah, your actions, mo most importantly. So, you know, if you were telling your child, don't hate your sister, and while spanking your, your child, don't hate your sister, <laughs> you can imagine the obvious hypocrisy in that action, all right? So, as parents, we have to really strive to um, eliminate hypocrisy because that really creates some major cognitive dissonance in the child's brain that uh, one way or another will be resolved but will most likely contribute to some deeply repressed, um, you know, confused emotion, right? Um, and, and actually, uh, I was also reading that um, the, um, the incidence in, in those families that do spank, um, the, in, the incidence is more likely that the children will grow up to be um, what you call addictive personalities, right? Personalities that require um, <clears throat> outside substances to, for them to feel comforted and calm. And that could, that could range from cigarettes, that could range from alcohol, drugs. Um, and I'm not saying these things should be illegal, of course, but I'm just saying that these people grow up with major insecurities and they seek to um, alleviate those insecurities through self-medication. Right, so that's um, <clears throat> as well, and, and not only not only addictive uh, personalities, but they also are, are susceptible to a lot of uh, major illnesses like um, you know uh, circulatory problems, heart problems, right? So you know perhaps eating disorders as well. That could be another uh, addiction, addiction to food, right? So 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 it's it, it's really disruptive of of uh, of the natural neural pathways that occur, and actually. You know, as a child growing up, these neural pathways in the brain are constantly, constantly being developed, you know. So, so the, the, it's, very, um, it's very malleable, meaning um, it's really dependent on how the child's raised. So, so if a child's raised with a parent that is quick to anger, short temper, <clears throat> and immediately resorts to violence, how do you think the child's going to grow up? <laughs> and how do you think the child is going to think to solve problems in their daily life, right? Of course, they're gonna most likely mimic their parents because this is this is the first this is the first example that they have to see, right? Is their own parents in how to how to behave in society. So, <clears throat> so yeah, as parents, we have to be very mindful of uh, of how we treat our children because not only um, not not only are we uh, affecting them. But just imagine, they are the future. They are the next generation. There's going to be the society of tomorrow, all right? And if you really want to see peace and the absence of violence and the absence of war, why do you continue to raise your children violently, right? With the whip or with the cable or with the wooden spoon or whatever you <laughs> use to hit your children. Why do you continue to do that? We are breeding a generation of violent individuals. Okay? And just think about it. <clears throat> if, if every one of us were to practice peaceful parenting and attachment parenting, okay, and you know, co-sleeping and all these things, bonding with your children, okay, <clears throat> keeping them as close as possible, um, embracing them as close as possible, you know, holding them when they're young as, as much as possible. What kind of society would that bring about, right? Um, and, and, you know, not moving to violence to teach them a lesson, right? Like, like some parents, um, when their kids take a nasty fall, or let's say they burn themselves, then they hit their child and they think that their child will make the connection between um, falling and then getting hit. So they, 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 they reason that this is going to make them less likely to fall. Uh, no. <clears throat> Sorry, it doesn't.
<laughs> okay? There is something called natural law, all right? And one aspect of natural law is gravity, right? Another aspect of natural law is thermodynamics, right? So in gravity, when you fall, you get hurt. <laughs> you feel pain. <laughs> you get a scrape. You get a bruise or whatever, okay? There's already punishment associated with violating that natural law. And the child understands that. Regardless of what age, regardless of what age, the child understands the natural law of gravity. All right? And eventually, they will develop the coordination and, and the, uh, the muscular maturity to fall less <laughs> in the future. So it's not needed to apply more violence. Okay? It doesn't do anything to help the situation. All it does is strike confusion into the child and more pain, <laughs> additional pain, okay? It's not necessary and is entirely counterproductive. And the same goes with, let's say you, a child burns themselves on, on, a, on a stove, on a hot stove, and then the parent you know, smacks them as a result, right? Obviously, the child has made the connection between touching a hot stove and pain, <clears throat> right? And so it's not necessary to inflict more pain, all right? So, so these are what's called natural laws, okay? And we all learn them from infancy. <laughs> we all have understood them just growing up in, in, this, in this dimensional world that we live in, all right? So um, additional, additional spanking and violence is completely counterproductive and produces more damage than it does good, <clears throat> right? Um, and other people, so I heard someone, someone else say, well, well, what if your child runs into the street? What are you going to do? Just going to let him run into the street? <laughs> Obviously, if they're running into the street, they have no conception of self-preservation, right? Obviously, that's before uh, they develop that, right? And no, I'm not saying allow them to get hit by a car <laughs> so they feel the pain of that. All right, because that would be excessive. <laughs> All right, so obviously there are certain situations that we must restrain our children for their own good, right? Now, that being said, I try as little as possible to resort to that, as little as possible, because I do want them to make their own mistakes. That's how we learn as a species. That's how. You know, that's how you learn in business, right? You, you, you do something different, you lose clients, you gain clients, you learn, right? You make mistakes. You never made mis if you never make a mistake, you never learn, right? <laughs> you would never learn anything. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm also a chess player, so I, uh, I also enjoy losing sometimes because through a loss, you can analyze the game and make improvements in your game and, and that makes you that much smarter, right? So, so... Um, it's important to allow children to fail, to fall, to feel some pain, okay? I'm not saying excessive, I'm not saying get hit by a car. <laughs> I'm not saying something drastic like that, but be reasonable people, okay? Um, so just think about it. The more that they fall now, <clears throat> the less they will fall in the future, right? So um, stop smothering your children. <laughs> stop trying to construct a bubble around them so that they will not uh, feel pain whatsoever, okay? Because pain is the, is the driving force that improves the quality of our lives, all right? And it, and it improves our actions. And it's how, it's how we learn, you know? You make friends, you know, you lose friends. <laughs> it's how you learn. Everybody fails at something. If you never fail at anything, all it means is you didn't try. You didn't try, <laughs> or maybe you didn't try hard enough, all right? Step out of your comfort zone and try something new, all right? So, so please, everyone, be nice to your children. They are the future of society. They will determine the state of our world, all right? And treat them the way that you want to see the world in the future. So this, that's all for today. This is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Uh, this is your host, Danilo Cuellar. 
I uh, wish you all have a good day. Take care.